Today is Eric Adams' first day as mayor of New York City. He was sworn in last night after the ball drop in Times Square. Now Mayor Adams is making his first address to New Yorkers from City Hall. Let's listen in. Sanitation, who worked to safely deliver a successful celebration. And I want to recognize our nurses and other hospital staff who are working hard to keep our city open 24 hours a day by caring for patients ill with COVID and other illnesses. These past two years, our city workers, including educators, agency personnel, and all the women and men who keep New York running, have made sacrifices for this city again and again. Every day I am in office, I will remember their commitment to the city and be inspired by it. I say thank you. I chose Times Square as the site of my swearing in because I take this important office as a time of great challenges for our city. And I wanted New Yorkers and the world to be reminded of two things right away as my administration begins. First, that despite COVID-19 and its persistence, New York is not closed. It is still open and alive because New Yorkers are more resilient than the pandemic. And second, that New York can and should be the center of the universe again, bustling, thriving, electric with the energy of people, impatient with the imperfect word, sharpening and shaping it, leading it to something better through this sheer will and talent. We all need that reminder right now. We have lived through two years of continuous crises and that insults our very nature as New Yorkers. The crisis tells us that it is in charge, that it is in control. The crisis wants to tell us we can be happy, when we can be sad, when we can work, and how we can enjoy our city. The crisis wants to tell us how to live. But there's one thing everyone knows about New Yorkers. We don't like anyone telling us what to do. Yet, unemployment remains high, crime is high, COVID cases are high again. So how do we get our city back? My fellow New Yorkers, the answer is simple. We will get our city back by making a commitment to each other right here, right now, beginning today. This will be our New Year's resolution. We will not be controlled by crisis. Instead, we we'll make this city better every day through actions big and small. Getting vaccinated is not letting the crisis control you. Enjoying a Broadway show, sending your kids to school, going back to the office, these are declarations of confidence that our city is our own. Of course, government must do its job to allow New Yorkers to make these choices safely. And government must do better. Our government has been dysfunctional for far too long, and it created its own crisis long before COVID. Whether it was crime-ridden communities, poor schools, economic inequality, or racial injustice, our problems have been normalized for generations while New York's government struggled to match the energy and innovation of New Yorkers. That changes today. I promise you one thing, New York. I will make our city better every day by making our city government better every day. That does not just mean grand plans and proposals. It means weeding out the waste and eliminating the inefficiencies. It's about accountability. This may seem like an obvious approach, but it is so practical that it has been forgotten. And now is the time to be radically practical because a better city this is not just about doing something new. It's about doing something right. It's not about showmanship. It's about showing up. That is why the theme of my first 100 days is GSD, get stuff done. And I have assembled a government that will solve New York's problems because it understands New York is. My administration looks like the city it represents. It's diverse and includes individuals who struggled here just like so many of you, often fell by the very system that now oversee. 
I am one of them. I am one of you. My mother worked as a cook and a house cleaner, barely keeping a roof over our heads and food on the table in South Jamaica, Queens, no matter how hard she worked. I was bused to school because our school was failing. I was ridiculed, ridiculed because I had an undiagnosed learning disability. I was a dishwasher and a clerk, and I went to school at night to get my degree before becoming a cop. I was arrested as a teenager. I was beaten by police, and later today, I will go back to that same precinct house, and I will address the officers there as their mayor. The beginning of my story is like so many others in this city, so many of which end in sorrow instead of triumph. But with a better city government and a laser focus on taming COVID, turning our economy around and lowering crime, we can add glory to more New York stories. But to do this, we must also put down the weapons of rhetoric and reach for results. The ideological wars of our recent political past are more costly now than ever as we face such serious challenges. These fights divide us by forcing us to make forced choices rather than working together on practical solutions. Some will continue to say that we must choose between public safety and human rights, but we can have both. That is why I am going to put more resources into stopping violent crime while I work with Commissioner Sewell to bring reform to our police department. Some would say that there cannot be winners in our economic turnaround without being losers in the same time. I say no to that. We can have an economy that lifts up working people and brings prosperity to all New Yorkers. And that is why I will work with big employers, small businesses, unions, everyday workers to remove whatever barriers lay in front of them so they can thrive. And some would say that we must choose between shutting down our city and endangering New Yorkers with COVID. I say no to that as well. This is 2022 not 2020, with vaccines, testing, and treatments. We have the tools now to live with this virus and stay healthy if we all do our part to keep each other safe. So we would choose not to make false choices. We would choose the truth, which is that we all want the same thing, a safe, prosperous, healthy city where we can raise our children and all, all New Yorkers can thrive, regardless of background, belief, or orientation. As I begin here today at City Hall, I look to my predecessors for perspectives, and I think we can all learn from their wise words. My good friend and mentor, the recently departed Mayor David Dinkins, famously called New York a gorgeous mosaic in his inauguration speech 32 years ago an observation as true today as it was then. He also pledged that his administration will never lead by dividing, by setting some of us against the rest of us, or by favoring one group over others. I pledge to do the same. But perhaps the words that resonate the most with me in this moment are from Mayor Koch's inauguration speech 12 years before Mayor Dinkins. When this city was facing a financial crisis that set it on the verge of ruin, Mayor Koch said, these have been hard times. We have been tested by fire. We have been drawn across the knife edge of poverty. We have been inundated by problems. We have been shaken by troubles that have destroyed any other city would have destroyed. But we are not any other city. We are New York and New York in adversity towers above any other city in the world. And Mayor Koch added, New York is not a problem. It's a stroke of genius. I know and you know who we are. I agree with him then as a boy. I agree with him now. So today we remember our strength. We face our fears and we start anew, confident that crisis will not define us. The last two years have trapped our spirit and is begging to be let out. We have been stifled, we have been asleep, but we are a city of nine million dreams, and we're about to wake up. 
cannot wait to greet this new day with you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, New Yorkers. My mother has transitioned in April during the campaign season, and she's no longer with me physically. But this city betrayed her like it has betrayed so many other mothers and families. That betrayal stops. This is our city. Nothing is going to define us. Nothing is going to stop us. We're going to renew our spirits again. Let's do it together. I know and you know, if I can borrow from the great owner of Snapple Soft Drinks, we're going to win because we're made up of the best stuff on earth. We are New Yorkers. Thank you. You've been watching Eric Adams make his first address as mayor of New York City. For continuing coverage of Mayor Adams' inauguration and his plans for the city, go to our website, cbsnewyork.com.